All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, we are gonna install a big, fat knocker on this pinball cabinet, and I've got a very evil kind of prank I wanna pull on some unsuspecting people at the end of the video. So if you wanna check it out, you gotta stick around till the end. All right, enough yakking, let's get her done. So first off, some of you are probably thinking, what the heck is a knocker? Well, in pinball, at the end of a game, you have a random number pop up and it says that you have to try to match that number with the last two digits of your high score. And it's based off of percentage of wins, so the operator can set it so that you can win a free game. And if you match, you hear this, a really big knock from one of these pinball knockers. Traditionally, they are up in the back box inside underneath so that this solenoid can smack on the bottom side of the wood and make a really loud sound. And then that lets you know, hey, I won a free game. And it often scares the crap out of people, which leads me to my little prank that we're gonna do after we're done here. So uh, let's take a look at the knocker I'm going to install. All right, so what you're looking at here is a 12 volt to 24 volt knocker circuit conversion kit from Cleveland Software Designs. Special thank you to Philip for sponsoring this video. So what are we looking at here? This is a very high powered solenoid that is mounted to a nice skookum frame that we can mount inside our back box and get that thing to slap and make a big noise. Now in the kit, you also get this board. This is a voltage step up board and it has two functions. The first one is that we're gonna take the 12 volt input from our power supply in the V-pin cab and then when it outputs it, it's gonna be 24 volts going to this knocker which is gonna make it even louder and have a nice for us. And then it's triggered by our positive negative signal uh, whichever boards you're using in your V-pin cabinet. So for us, we're gonna use our MOS 8 boards from our nose to trigger that. Now this has also got some safety built into this so that this solenoid never stays on and that way we don't actually burn down our cabinet because of a stuck solenoid. Sweet. And, and then to mount this board, I ended up finding a very cool STL that was already made by somebody in the community. This is from Luke Oliver and I will put a link to his STL file so you can print this off in your 3D printer and mount your board in your cabinet nicely. Sweet. Let's start putting this in. And so Philips kit also comes with lengthy wires that already have the Quick Connects pre-attached. So literally it is plug and play. So as Owen Wilson would say, wow. So what we're gonna do is try to figure out where we can place these parts so that we can make use of these already done wires for us. So I've kind of done this ahead of time and I'm thinking if we mount this over to here, I can still reach the powering ground distribution blocks, and then the wire on the knocker will be long enough to get all the way up to the back box. So let's go ahead and mount this. Okay, so the 12 volt input, we're gonna put the negative to our ground distribution block. And then the 12 volt positive to our 12 volt positive power distribution block. Okay, then for the signal, you're gonna take the positive and put it to your 12 volt. All right, now for this build, we are triggering our DOF mechanical toys using Latelier d'Arno boards. We've got a Walter board down there uh, that is giving us pulse width modulated control over our 16 mechanical toys through these MOS 8 boards. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you wanna be able to set this up, I will post a link above to a video where you can see how to figure this out, as well as some other things for DOF for figuring out how to get a gear motor working. Now, uh, for us, we're gonna use this third port here on the first MOS 8 board. So our signal negative wire is gonna go into there. Okay, next up is installing the actual knocker. So looking from the front of the cabinet, I am going to the left side inside the back box and I'm just going to be bolting it like this somewhere near the top so that when this plastic piece of the solenoid injects out, it's going to smash the underside of this here. Uh, really just make sure it doesn't interfere with anything, make sure the door can close kind of thing. And I go ahead and lay it out and screw the holes and install it. Now one really key thing is this tab like this should be down to the bottom so that when it is done hitting, it will come back. So we wanna mount it like this in the cabinet. OK, 
Okay, and then the output to the knocker goes on to the board where it says output. Slick. Okay, and then off camera, I'm gonna clean up all these wires and make it look all nice and organized in here, and I highly recommend you do that too. So you can show off the inside of your V-pin cab, which is just as impressive as the outside. All right, now that you have that knocker set up in your V-pin cab, it is time to set it up digitally. So we're going to go to the dude's cab configurator first. Double left click on that. Hey, dude. Dude Arino. Okay, we're gonna go connect. And we're gonna to go to output cards. And once again, if you are not sure what's going on here, I have previous videos that talk about how to set up the dude's cab and how to set up the output cards. Um, so just in case you don't have this set up, it's already there. Okay, go to output cards. And we already have this MOS 8 board, so now we're gonna start our third port. So I'll click on that to open up a third port. And go down here and there's our third port. And we're gonna make sure we call it knocker so that we know which one's which. I can leave it on custom and knocker's definitely gonna wanna have some night mode activated. So let's click on that. So that way when we push the night mode button on the inside of the coin door, we can turn it off so it will make noise. Or we can even at the very beginning on the general tab up here, you can make it so that when the uh, dude's cab starts up and you start playing your V-pin, night mode will already be turned on. It's just a matter of turning it off. Um, so we can leave all these settings here and save it. Go to send config, save to memory. And right here, now we don't wanna put pulse width modulation on. All we really wanna do is pulse it. So here we go, here's our test. Nice. Very cool. All right, that's working for our test. Okay, then go ahead and close this out. Okay, now we're going to go to C drive, V pinball, visual pinball, scroll down to find our default V pin X. Double left click on that, and then open up preferences, and go to configure keys nudge and doff. And then over here on the right, we've got our knocker settings for doff. Um, some people leave it on both. I personally think if you've got a real knocker, let's turn off the digital one and just have doff. Okay, press down here, okay. Now you can go ahead and close this. Close that. And then the last thing is we have to go into our VP Universe config files. So. Open up a browser, type in VPU config, and it's this one right here. Okay, and then go ahead and just click anything here, and it'll initiate that you gotta log yourself in. Put in your user and password. Okay, make sure you're on the right uh, pinball cabinet. This is the big budget one. And come over here to cabinet, and we're gonna go down. So once again, we've already set up some mechanical toys, so uh, we've gone into devices and we've already got our dude's cab. So we just go to port assignments. Yeah, then make sure that you're set on the dude's cab and then here's our port. So port one was the gear motor, port two is the shaker. So port three is gonna be our knocker. So just scroll down till you see knocker. Perfect. And then we gotta make sure we save this. So go over here and press update. And then the very last thing we gotta do is we gotta generate a new config file that we can put into our direct output folder. Okay, that's done. Go to our download folder. We can double left click on that zip file and we're gonna left click and copy all of these things. Right click, copy. And then we gotta go to our C drive and go to our direct output folder. And you can see the same ones are right here. So we're gonna right click, paste. It's gonna ask, do you wanna replace them? Say yes. Bingo, bango, done. Close this up, close that up, and go ahead and start up Pinup Popper and let's try this out. All right, now when you play pinball games, there is a certain percentage of winning free games so that the operators can make some money and not give away free games all the time. It's usually set around like 5%, it's not very much. Some even turn it right off. Now for us, I want this to go off a lot more often so that I don't have to play 50 games to get a free game and have it make that nice noise. So uh, you can go in to your coin door settings or like us with our brain board, we're gonna go in with a game open and we can go in and change that win percentage. Now I think the highest you can get on any of them is about 50%. So I picked a game and I've set it to 50% and um, now here's where the fun happens. I'm gonna get some unsuspecting people to play the game and I'm gonna be recording their 
reactions to playing pinball and uh, when they match, which is going to be really flip a coin every other time, it's going to go and hopefully we'll catch some cool reactions from the people as they're playing. So let's try it out. Oh, nice. All right, so we had this set up and everything works great in the cabinet, but I would like to squeak a little bit more loudness out of this knocker. I want it so loud that people are clenching butt cheeks when this thing goes off. So uh, how can we do this? Well, there's two methods. Instead of putting this close to or very pretty much up at the top of the cabinet, you can go a little bit lower to give this plunger a little bit more momentum to go a little bit longer and get reach a faster speed before it actually connects with your cabinet. So I'm going to try lowering that a bit in about almost half an inch and see if I can get a little bit more oomph out of it. And the second I'll show you in a second. Sounds a little louder already. Now the second thing I got to show you on the CSD knocker board. All right now on the CSD board, the second thing you can do is there is a little jumper here that's connecting two of these eight open pins. Uh, you can move these jumpers to other locations to change the amplitude of the power on this board. Uh, I would not touch these or move that jumper though with power on, so make sure the power is off when you do that. And uh, you can mess around with those and see if it helps. Now there is a blue potentiometer right there. I would not touch that. That is for the whole duration and it's meant to be very, very minimal. Uh, so I wouldn't really touch that one. So we move that knocker down half an inch from where it was and it's about kind of like a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch away from its full length of travel on that plunger. And I've gone in and I moved that little jumper up to the next notch and I'm in the configurator. So let's give it a little test here. Oh yeah, that actually sounds a lot nicer. It's a nice crack to it. Sweet. All right, I think at this time we gotta find some unsuspecting people and scare the crap out of them. Woo! Whoa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got a game, I got another game. Sweet. All right, so whenever you're ready, you gotta put money in. So it's this button here. Okay. <laughs> What'd you do? I uh, broke it. <laughs> Did I break it? <laughs> All right, that's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to install the Cleveland Software Designs Knocker Conversion Kit. If you are interested in buying this for your VPN, I will put a link down in the video description below so that you can go and check it out. Uh, what's next? Uh, I think we need to put some more mechanical toys. I need more toys. So you just have to stick around and see what I put in next. If you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram so you can see what's going on in the shop in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.